Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here. Welcome to part nine, which is uh, performance testing in our VMware Workstation 17 building a nested uh, lab. Uh, but first, before I finalize this series, I just wanted to give a, a word of thanks out to my sponsor, which was Intel and the VMware uh, vExpert program. Uh, their generous support of the Intel Optane samples really made this possible. Uh, if you're interested more about uh, Intel Optane disks, uh, check out this QR code here. There's a lot of information. Plus, there's a lot of information on my blog and also other video series out there around these phenomenal disks. All right, so part nine agenda. We're going to be installing HCI Bench. Uh, then we're going to run an HCI Bench test, which will give us some performance results. And then we'll review those results. Okay, as you know, we're on part nine, which is the last one all the way at the bottom here of the list. Uh, so happy to be completed this series, and uh, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed it as well. Uh, overall series goal, we're wrapping it up. Everything is pretty much striked out. So uh, we should be able to uh, run VMs, which is the HCI bench, right? So we're going to put that on. That's a, a VM on top of it. And the nested environment should run relatively smoothly, which you can, you'll can you see from the video out here that uh, how well it does run and perform. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is Everything else has been established. We've got the uh, VCSA, we've got Active Directory, all three of our ESXi hosts have all been deployed. But what we're gonna do is right now is we're gonna deploy this guy right here. And what it's gonna do is he's gonna deploy additional VMs, and you'll see that in the video, additional VMs that are gonna ramp up and test the actual nested host to see what types of performance benchmarks uh, they can produce. And with that, why don't we go ahead and get right into it. We'll get started with the lab. Thank you so much. All right, let's get going with uh, HCI Bench. So as you can see here uh, with Workstation, I've got uh, all my VMs fired up, my Active Directory controller, vCenter server, and my three ESA hosts. And uh, they're ready to go, uh, no big errors. So we're ready to move forward with installation of HCI Bench. Uh, I've already downloaded HCI Bench here to my installation files, and you can get it by going to the Flings site, which is flings.vmware.com slash HCI Bench. Now, if you can't remember HCI Bench, that's fine. Just go into flings.vmware.com and type in uh, HCI Bench, and it should take you to this uh, uh, download page here. So basically just agree, choose the OVA, and click download. You can also download the guide if you want for more information, which I recommend, such as the password and things of that nature, right? Uh, so here's what's going on with HCI Bench. Uh, once we deploy the appliance, what it's going to do is it kind of looks at our system and evaluates the system for the amount of size, memory, all those types of things. And then we'll spin up guest VMs and it'll ramp them up and down to form a profile, uh, a performance profile, and then give us results. That's the whole point of it. What I'm looking for is total IOPS. How many IOPS can this produce? Now, I'm not expecting a uh, you know a performance <laughs> a high performance number here. You know, I'm we'll I will guess we'll see what it comes out with. But again, we're running nested ESA on workstation, so it's not going to be earth shattering. But it's more the point of going through and just kind of testing it out and playing with it. All right, so let's go ahead and get going with that. So to get the OVA going, let's go ahead and maximize a few things and make it a little bit easier to see here. All right, nested cluster. All right, now we're gonna go up here and go to deploy OVF template, even though it's an OVA, local file. Okay, we wanna to go to our desktop here. And we're gonna choose the 2.8.0 version. Okay. Next. Leave it as default. Same on the cluster configuration. Okay, review the details. Accept the agreements. All right, so now we're gonna choose storage, which is our vSAN data store, okay? Now, this is where it gets a little more important. Now, it's choosing VM network as our default network. And if we went back and looked at the host, we would actually see the old uh, vSwitch 0 
with a VM uh, uh, VM network port group. That was the original one that was created before things got migrated to our VDS. So what we want to choose is the VDS one. So we're going to go in here and we're going to choose our VDS management VMs. Okay, because that's where they run. This is also important to remember this particular item right here. We're going to need that later on when we're doing some configuration. Okay, choose next. Okay, we're going to leave this all blank, and here's why. If you go scroll down here and see where it says management network type DHCP, that's where we want to leave it, DHCP. And the only thing we have to do at this point is put in a password. And click next okay you can review all the details if you'd like no big deal click finish all right I'm gonna let this deploy it's gonna take a few minutes for it to go through and get its job done and then we'll pick it up from there all right the HCI bench uh, appliance has deployed and I've powered it on simply by right-clicking on it and choosing power on I waited for it to boot up and one of the things I noticed that when it's ready to go is it's gonna produce uh, two IP addresses. Now, a quick uh, tip here, if you don't receive DHCP addresses here, then you might want to go back in and check just to make sure in your settings that the uh, correct port group was selected. Uh, it's very, it's sometimes common that it didn't pick it properly. It went to VM network instead of the one we chose. In this case, it chose it properly and they're connected, so there should be no reason why we can't get a DHCP address. Okay, so uh, another tip you can do is go to the unsecured site and you'll see there's a bunch of information in here. This is where a lot of your results and other logs will be stored. You might go there to get quick results when they're posted and ready to go. Okay, so let's go into HCI Bench now. Now I've already logged in simply with uh, root and the password that I established when I deployed the OVA and I filled out the form here. So what you want to do, of course, put in your uh, vCenter server, your data center name. Uh, if you have a specific uh, folder that you want the VMs deployed in, you can put that. Uh, vSAN data store here, right? Uh, the username, of course, your cluster name. Here is the most important part. This is listed as optional. And if you do not put in the correct uh, network name that you want, it's going to choose VM network. Now, VM network is not attached in our environment. If we go and look at it here real quick on any of these hosts, go into configure, virtual switches, there's management, okay? Management VMs, it's connected to the network. Down below here is vSwitch zero. This is VM network, okay? This is the old port group, not connected, won't get a DHCP address, okay? So there's a couple places here where you need to make sure that's right. One was the setup of the OVA and right here you need to make sure it's done. Put in your password, you can put choose other optional things if you want. I'm doing the easy run for this demonstration. Just chose the first one on the list. Now, once it's done, you need to click on Save Configuration and Finish is what you should see. If you get a solid bar all the way across and it just kind of hangs up, it's not done. Even though it says Close Window, you got to wait for it to say Finished. Okay, Close Window. So now that it's finished, now we can click on Validate Configuration let this run again it should come back and say everything is okay which it has ip or credential info information are correct we are ready to run so now what we're going to do is click on start test okay it's going to start going through allow it to do what it needs to to finish up all right going into the hci bench I already logged in as uh root and the password that I typed in. So we need to fill out all the information here uh, that is necessary. So first is the IP address or the host name of the vCenter server, the data store or data center name, and if you have an optional folder name you want the VMs to be deployed in. We want to use the vSAN data store, <clears throat> our user for vCenter server and its password, the cluster name, Okay, these are all things that you have to fill in. Now, some of these are marked optional, and one of those that is marked optional is the actual uh, network name. This is something you're going to want to fill in, because if you don't, it's going to choose a VM network, which is not the right network. If you remember back here, we looked at this host here, 
and we go into configure virtual switches, that's the one we want because it's attached to the network. Okay, we don't want what's on vSwitch 0 here, which is VM network port group. This is the one we don't want because it's the old virtual switch that uh, was migrated to virtual distributed switches. Okay, so let's go back over here. Make sure you have that uh, port group name proper. Okay, and then what you're going to do is slide down and click on save configuration. The first time you're here, validate configuration will be grayed out until you click on save configuration. Once it's finished, and be patient if there's a blue line here, uh, once it goes to finish, close it out and click on validate configuration. What you'll see next is a whole long list that everything is fine. Now it's saying that our vSAN data store doesn't exist, so we'll probably need to go back and just check the spelling on that and make sure that is correct. Okay, so what, what the problem was is we had a little bit of a typo right there. It wants a lowercase s. So now let's save it. See how it went to gray? Save config, close the window, and let's validate again. Let it go through its validation and give us a nice report. And this is what we were looking for. Now it took a few minutes to go through and run, right? And we can scroll down and look at the notes here as it went through and it checked everything out. Uh, but really what we're looking for is it's go ahead and kick off testing. Now, one thing we do want to do before we start testing is go back to our cluster, okay? Right here. We're gonna go into configure. And what we want to do is disable uh, DRS. This way, when the VMs come up and they're putting a lot of load on the server, they kind of stay put. So let's disable DRS and choose OK. Let's go back into the configuration page, and now we can click on Start Test. So now it's going to go through its uh, uh, test procedure. What you're going to see over here is lots of little VMs start to be created as it starts to create them for the actual te load testing. And here they come. So what's gonna happen is these are gonna spin up. The HCI uh, appliance is gonna coordinate with them a load test, and this is gonna run for quite a while. So we're gonna let it finish deploying. We're gonna go ahead and let it finish doing its tests. And as it's going through, one thing you might want to do, remember this is workstation, right? We can bounce back here to Windows as this is running, okay? And we can go into uh, Task Manager, and we can start to look and see how things are performing. You know, right now we're pulling about 27% CPU and 53% memory. We can get some more statistics on the individual drives that it goes through it starts testing. Remember, a lot of these are our Optane friends, right? The, all the Optane drives we have here, we'll start to see them kind of uh, kick off and start to do their thing. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to let it uh, ramp up and then we'll check in on the performance metrics and other things uh, real soon and get our final results. Okay, it's starting to wrap up the deployment here. Let's go to make this large screen so we can see a little bit better again. What I noticed is it's starting to deploy about four VMs per host, right? So host one has four VMs and we can look at them here. Go into host one, you can see another VMs. <clears throat> okay, we can see the, these are the four that are actually running on here. One, one, zero, two, uh, two, three, and one, four are all running on this host, right? So usually right around a total of four HCI VMs uh, per host. You can also see that on three. And it's now it's gonna start ramping it up. So let's go back and look at the configuration, okay? The deployment started, it's still going through that. It might seem a little pokey, just give it a chance to do its job. It's gotta spin these up, it's got a lot of coordination to do. It's gonna start figuring out. Eventually what it's gonna do is start ramping these VMs up and figuring out what kind of load it takes and is it oversubscribing these hosts or not. And speaking of oversubscribing, if you're gonna do a test like this with HCI Bench, I would recommend you power down all of your VMs on it first, right? Except for vCenter server, which is required. Um, but power down all non-essential VMs. If you have VMs in a production environment or even a development environment, you only want the HCI VMs running. In fact, the best way to do this is when you first build your clusters, do this benchmarking before anything has been uh, deployed to it. It'll give you a nice baseline. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to allow it to uh, go through its testing now. It's going to ramp things up, ramp things down, and then at the end we'll get a nice little report and we'll, uh, we'll check it out.
All right, the system's been running for several several hours, so let's take a quick peek and see what's going on here. So you can see it's about 75% done with this testing, but there are two new links for us to look at here and monitor the actual performance. So basically clicking on these two links is gonna bring you to two areas. One, it's gonna direct you to the performance, cluster performance metrics uh, inside uh, vSAN. So if you go to monitor, uh, and then down to vSAN and performance. <clears throat> you can get some idea of uh, various IOPS and, and things of that nature. So about 6,000 total IOPS between the two, right? Uh, our overall throughput metrics, you know, quite a bit of latency going on, which is probably expected. Uh, just different things like that, outstanding IO. And then there's Grafana uh, different items here that you can look at uh, to get an idea of uh, different metrics and things of that nature. There's quite a bit of, uh, information here if you just kind of dig around and poke around in it. But we're going to go ahead and let uh, this guy uh, finish up. And then when we do, we'll take a look at our final IOPS rating and we'll go from there. All right, let's uh, go ahead and wrap this up. So let's go into HCI Bench. And as you can see, uh, it's, uh, it's all complete. In fact, we can see our results right here if we click here. And you can see right there we had a total of about Max about 61, or 6,100 <laughs> IOPS. It would be nice if it was 61,000, but it's not. 6,109 uh, IOPS is what it came out, or this uh, system could uh, produce with those tests. So uh, there's other things you can do in here, of course. Uh, let's close this out. Um, if you don't want to do the easy run, you can actually create your own and go through and choose the number of VMs, the size, you know, all types of different specs. You can help, you can put different workload files in it. There's a lot of flexibility uh, with HCI Bench, uh, far more than we can do in uh, this one video. But I think you get the gist of how to kind of performance benchmark or start to performance benchmark it and uh, complete it. So folks, uh, that's the end of this series. Thank you so much for, uh, hopefully you listened to all the parts. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Always glad to uh, respond to those. And I appreciate uh, you getting through these parts, uh, this series. So again, have a great day and take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.